Uh, oh, this is me. Okay. Uh, the first speaker is a uh, uh, power capital um, from uh, Warsaw. He's telling us about holographic path integral optimization. Okay. Uh, please. Okay. So, hello, everyone. Good evening. Good morning. Good <laughs> afternoon, wherever you are. It's an interesting uh, meeting. And indeed, uh, today I'll be talking about holographic path integral optimization. Uh, so first I'll give a brief motivation, then uh, I will describe uh, the idea of path integral optimization. And uh, in the second part of my talk, I'll talk about more recent works on hard to hawking wave functions in ADS spacetimes and their relation to path integral optimization. And finally, I conclude and pose some open questions. So this work is based on a series of papers, actually the two recent ones with uh, Tadashi Takayanagi in the University of Kyoto and my student Jan Boruch uh, and Dong Shenge, that is a postdoc, uh, that uh, Dong Sheng is a postdoc and Jan is my student in Warsaw. And also an earlier work this year that uh, appeared uh, uh, with Jan and also Tadashi. And, and the kind of first part of the talk will be a brief review of an earlier work already from 2017 on path integral optimization. And that was done with a group in Kyoto with Tadashi Takayanagi, uh, Nilai Kundu, Masamichi Miyagi, and Kento Watanabe that were uh, at the time, that we were all at the time in Kyoto. Okay, so please, please feel free to stop me at any point and ask uh, questions or if you have comments, I'll be happy to. Uh, stop and, and discuss. Okay, so the main. Okay, so um, the the main body of this work is embedded in uh, in uh, the so-called ADS CFT correspondence. So let me just briefly uh, review uh, what I'll be using from that. And uh, when uh, when we talk about and we think about ADS CFT, we usually have in mind uh, the generic dictionary between some quantum mechanical systems in d dimensions and uh, quantum gravity on ADS space times in d plus one dimensions. And this is of course an old proposal due to um, Aldersena from already ninety seven. And ADS CFT uh, gives us a dictionary between sta quantum states, uh, let's say vacuum or thermal state of quantum mechanical systems. In particular, uh, we most uh, we usually uh, think about quantum mechanical systems uh, uh, of many bodies and at criticalities, and this these are dubbed uh, to CFTs, conformal field theories. And then uh, the states in CFTs, they are identified or they're somehow related to geometries in MD plus one dimensions with negative cosmological constants. So for example, vacuum state is an empty, it was related to empty space times and thermal state is related to black hole in ADS. And the dictionary tells us how to compare observables computed uh, using say density matrices or particular observables in quantum mechanical system and how to compare them and perfectly match in, in all the known examples with gravity in ADS. So this dictionary uh, can be uh, phrased in the, uh, is moving, yes. So in particular, um, for my talk, uh, I'll be interested in defining the states on the left-hand side uh, using the Feynman path integral formalism and the uh, states in uh, quantum field theories, uh, as in all quantum mechanical systems, they can be de defined by uh, say a vacuum state, for example, by Euclidean path integral on a certain Euclidean geometry with uh, the Euclidean action of all the fields of, of your theory here. And basically the wave function in, in CFT or in quantum field theory is actually a wave function of a certain boundary condition so in this geometry, we'll be imposing a particular boundary condition for all the fields that I den denote uh, by this curly phi. And then we do, as usually, integral over all possible configurations of the fields with this prescribed boundary condition. And that's what the wave function of a quantum field theory is. So in particular, this states from this picture about generic ADS-CFT dictionary, uh, 
Um, ADC FT tells us that in holographic conformal field theories, this uh, definition of a quantum state or this Feynman buff integral somehow hides the information about dual ADS geometry. And the main motivation uh, of the series of work that we have been doing for quite some time already is the question how to extract this geometry from this definition of a quantum state in CFT, and, or namely from the Feynman path integral. Uh, is, the, is the motivation, is the idea clear? Okay, I assume. Okay, and then this brought us to the proposal of so-called path integral optimization uh, proposed in 2017. And the idea goes as follows. So um, this was largely motivated by ideas in, uh, on, on the interplay between ADS, CFT, and tensor networks. But I'll try to describe I'll try to describe it in a way that uh, one does not really need too much information about tensor networks. So I'll not be defining precise correspondence or precise details of tensor networks. So. Um, um, basically, the main idea uh, goes as follows. Uh, this, uh, from the left, uh, we have a cartoon of the usual uh, path integral, Euclidean path integral of your CFT, where we do it in this Euclidean time tau. And in general, we have some space x uh, that I collectively denote by this uh, small x here. And as I told you, we define the wave functional by uh, imposing a certain boundary condition, say at Euclidean time tau equals zero or epsilon. And then we integrate over all possible configurations of the fields in this Euclidean geometry. So in particular, uh, when we discretize this space in many of these lattice sites, we can think about each of these small plaquettes or this mesh sites as, as basically a small contributions from the Euclidean path integral. And this is the definition of the original Euclidean path integral in CFT that is done in the flat space. Then uh, what we propose to do is uh, approximate in some sense this Euclidean path integral uh, by simply um, uh, performing a similar path integral, namely by uh, doing the path integral with the same boundary conditions that uh, specify the wave functional. So the same value of the fields are specified that this Euclidean time tau equals to minus epsilon, say, but somehow uh, do this path integral in a particular way such that once we go in this Euclidean direction tau, deeper and deeper, then we perform a bit less and a bit less and even less of this path integration. And uh, that uh, in, in kind of continuum language can be uh, simply described by introducing a metric to the Euclidean path integral. So instead of doing this Euclidean path integral on the flat space, we propose to do this Euclidean path integral on the curved geometry G. And then uh, in a moment, I'll tell you how to find the optimal metric G that prepares for your particular state. But basically in the procedure called path integral optimization, we'll be finding the uh, most optimal metric with a prescribed boundary condition. And this metric will resemble in some sense a tensor network picture of, uh, um, of, this, of this particular state. And, uh, and basically the optimization is done as follows. We propose to take the wave functional computed in the metric G. So this is this new one here. And we take the ratio of this wave functional to the wave functional in flat space. So this is the original one. And we define this ratio as exponent of some action functional that is a function of this metric G only. So in particular, in all the examples I will be setting uh, for all the states, you, you will see more concretely in a moment, the ratio of wave functionals will not depend on the prescribed boundary conditions. So it will all factor out in such a way that basically we will only have, this ratio will only be given by some functional of the metric G on this particular geometry. And then this, uh, expo this functional of G that appears in the exponent, uh, we call this uh, path integral complexity. And this will also hopefully become clear uh, why, where the name comes from. And basically uh, we perform the optimization. So we search for the most optimal metric on, on the Euclidean uh, path, on the geometry of Euclidean path integral in such a way that this complexity, this functional is minimized with prescribed boundary conditions. Okay, 
So this is in some sense an older idea um, and that dates back to 2017. And then basically let me, to make it more, this is more of a cartoon of this idea. And to make it precise, let me just uh, show you an example how this works in two dimensional conformal field theories where uh, basically all these metrics on uh, uh, two dimensional geometries. So all the possible G's in two dimensions, they can be written in this uh, uh, form. Uh, basically that's the first formula. So we have some vial factor generically from E to the two phi that depends on the Euclidean time and the coordinate X. In general, we can choose arbitrary background metric G hat AB, and then these are the two coordinates. So actually, if we want to compute the wave functional in this geometry and compute it to the wave functional in this background geometry, say G hat, that on my cartoon picture I took flat, then we can use the famous result from Polyakov uh, already from uh, 81 that um, basically relates the measure of the path integral of a CFT on the vial scale geometry to the measure of the, of the reference metric uh, of, the, of the path integral measure in the CFT of the reference metric. And these this measures are related simply by exponents of the Liouville action. So this uh, Liouville action here is, uh, is basically a fun is the functional of, uh, of this uh, vial factor phi. And this phi, this field phi propagates somehow in this, in this reference metric G hat. So probably from the audience from discrete quantum or continuous 2D quantum gravity, this is of course, a very uh, familiar object, but in particular, um, I wanted to stress that this uh, this, this Liouville action is very universal in some sense, and the, all the information about the CFT enters in this prefactor, the central charge here, and also once we do it for particular uh, states, of course, will be the spectrum of the states will also uh, be encoded in uh, in this geometric uh, data, as we'll see in some particular examples. And uh, let me also stress that the, this uh, potential of the Liouville uh, action uh, has a coefficient mu, uh, usually it's called the cosmological constant. And then um, for we can always perform a constant shift of the of the Liouville field such to, uh, such that we can set this mu to one. But in the later part of the talk, it will actually be more interesting to to work with arbitrary mu. So in particular, uh, and by the way, uh, I hope it. It's also clear that uh, once we have such a uh, vial rescaling of the background, by definition, the action of the Liouville, uh, sorry, the action of a CFT is invariant under vial rescalings. So actually, the only contribution to the uh, to the ratio of wave function not of the wave functions comes simply from this uh, uh, anomalous change of the measure of the path integral of the CFT. So in particular, when we compute the ratio of two wave functions in this Vialry scale uh, versus the, the wave function in the reference metric G hat, this is given precisely by, um, by the exponent of this action I, where this, this path integral complexity action that I, I, I defined on my cartoon before here, is now given simply by this Liouville action. Um, okay. Uh, and then uh, I told you that we have to perform an optimization. So basically, Sorry. Sorry. yes, yes. Can you go back once, right? Is is this property of the last line that it doesn't depend on, say, phi tilde? Uh, is is specific to while transformation? Um, like it it depends only on uh, uh, the while factor e to the two phi. If you change the metric mm -hmm. and you take a wave functional, the ratio of the new metric and an old yes. metric, it doesn't depend on the boundary condition. I think you may have mentioned that. Um, that always yes. the case? Yes, yes, yes. So this is definitely uh, what happens for the binary scaling in CFT. Yeah, yeah. That, that I understand because, you, you know. But if it's, you're bad. asking if it's specific to the virus scaling? Yeah, yeah. Because your exponential, uh, it's, I think you, you, you explained that way, so. Yes, yes, yes. So it, it's it specific. is specific to the virus scaling, for sure. Uh, okay. So in general, this I is not just the functional metric. Yeah, in, so uh, in, in CFT, 
in, in two dimensional CFT, it will be just an action, uh, it will be just a function of the metric. But if you um, if you perform some general deformation of a CFT or things like that, then things may get more complicated. And this function in general may may depend on, on more data of a theory that you're considering. Okay. So what to minimize is not completely clear then, right? Um, at least, well, from, from the examples that we studied in CFTs, we are kind of safe. Yeah. Uh, away from CFT, we we can make some progress as well. But okay. Um, okay. Anyway. Okay. Great. Yes. So maybe maybe it will be clear on the, on particular examples. But um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I think yeah. for, oh, for 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 king, I think it should be fine. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that, that I yeah, understand. Okay. Great. Uh, so. Um, Basically, now, as I mentioned, we, we want to choose the optimal metric as the metric that optimizes, uh, like as the minimum of the action uh, or of the path integral, so the path integral complexity. And that, of course, becomes the equation of motion of the Liouville action here in two dimensions. So the equations of motion, the equation of motion can be written in a covariant way as basically a constraint that the, the, the Ricci scalar of this metric G uh, hat which is basically the, the full metric, the file rescaling of the, 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 file risk, the file factor and the metric G hat, so that the Ricci scalar of this, of this Euclidean metric G is basically uh, equal to minus two times this uh, coefficient of the Liouville potential mu. So basically uh, in the Euclidean case, all these optimal backgrounds that we are considering are simply hyperbolic or const they have constant negative curvature by, by this uh, procedure of path integral optimization. So in particular, when we consider the flat background metric uh, in complex coordinate W, uh, which is say tau plus ix, then this is the famous Liouville equation. And, and the important thing is that, uh, as I showed you here on this, uh, on this cartoon, we want to choose these geometries in such a way that basically the, the mesh here uh, is the same once we go with in the Euclidean time to zero, the mesh here is the same as the mesh of the original geometry on which we were doing the path integral. So this is uh, uh, this basically corresponds to the boundary condition of, of the Liouville factor that as we go to the boundary of the Euclidean path integral, it should go as one over epsilon square. So it should really match the original cutoff of a CFT. And in particular, in this original paper in 2017, we worked uh, in this rescaling where this mu was set to one. And I will discuss in, in a bit uh, what is the role of the of, of mu once it's not one. Okay, so maybe uh, let me go to really explicit examples. When we compute, for example, the vacuum, uh, when we do the path integral for the vacuum of a CFT, we have to perform the path integral on the upper half plane. And then we can find the solution of Liouville equation, which is simply this one uh, that is optimal. And in, in, so it solves Liouville equations and it satisfies the boundary condition where tau goes to epsilon, this goes like one over epsilon squared. And actually this is nothing but just a hyperbolic plane. Um, the same when we do it, for example, for path integral that prepares the thermophile double state, which is basically a, a Euclidean path integral in a strip of size beta over two, uh, then the appropriate solution of the level field of the level equation is this one is one over cosine uh, square. And then uh, it has uh, basically one over epsilon square boundary condition at two boundaries, so it's beta over four and minus beta over four. And actually, um, um, okay, I'll mention one thing in a moment. And also we can do it for primaries. So for example, we can, we can do the path integral that prepares a, a vacuum state of a CFT at finite size, which is done on, on a disk. Uh, but we can also on the, same, on the same footing, we can basically uh, do the path integral for primaries, but where at the center of the disk, we insert um, some particular primary operator. And then uh, this course, the appropriate solution of Liouville equation is given by this, uh, this particular geometry, so-called the conical singularity, where uh, this parameter A now corresponds to the dimension of the primary operator 
uh, by this relation. It's basically one minus 12 H over C. And uh, actually one thing that is interesting that you can notice from this relation is that if you would think uh, about this Euclidean direction, Euclidean time tau uh, as, as in some sense being related to the radial direction of the ADS geometry, uh, then you can actually think about all this um, all these 2D metrics as basically particular time slices of three-dimensional ADS geometries that are dual to this particular state. So for example, ADS vac time slice of ADS vacuum would give you this H2, time slice of thermophile double, uh, sorry, time slice of eternal black hole in ADS would actually give you exactly this, uh, uh, this optimal solution for the strip and this, the same with conical singularity in ADS. And actually, we also perform the similar analysis for perturbations of the CFTs with uh, position dependent coupling. So that's related to the question of Yasunari. We, when we basically deform a CFT and then we also make the coupling, the formation coupling in a particular, that depends on the position in a particular way, that we can, then we can again do the optimization. And we found that the geometries uh, correspond perturbatively to, def, to ADS geometries, ADS time slices of ADS free geometries with a bug reaction from a particular scale are still dual to this deformation. So again, um, in some sense, um, um, basically you could think about this uh, in the same way as we think about tensor networks is some slices of ADS geometries. But I, ho I'll tr I hope that the second part of my talk will try to make this connection with holography, particularly with holography more clear. Um, okay, uh, are there any questions about these examples? Okay, if not, uh, then let me move on. And as I mentioned, uh, basically, uh, we're thinking about uh, a path um, about this Liouville action, or basically this definition um, of the action that appears in the ratio of two wave functions with a functional as a, as a relative path integral complexity. In the sense that um, we can think about it as, uh, as basically uh, a complexity uh, of, uh, in the same way as we think about complexity of tensor networks uh, that, that usually is, is measured by some um, uh, basically number of tensors in, in the optimal network that prepares a particular state. In the same way, this, this Liouville action can be thought of as, as basically a relative uh, complexity of, uh, uh, of two path integrals, one path integral that prepares for you a state in the geometry G hat generally, and another path integral that prepares for you uh, a particular quantum state in the Vieri scaling of this geometry G hat, where in the 2D example, this was basically this I was just a definition of a Liouville action was defined by Liouville action, uh, and and when and we actually subtracted this Liouville action with the zero value of of the field phi, which is basically just a, a notation for for the volume piece you know, of the geometry G hat. And actually, from from the approaches of uh, to two D quantum gravity, um, this this property, this this action, this actually difference of the Liouville action satisfies interesting properties, namely. Um, Actually, this Liouville action, um, this, uh, this functional G, G, uh, I as a functional of the metric G1, you can think about the first metric as G1 and this reference metric G2, it's actually, it can actually be negative. So uh, basically when we have I evaluated as between G1 and G2 is equal to minus I G2 G1. And also when we have uh, the sum of the two actions between G1 and G2 and G2 and G3, actually it's equal to the, uh, the relative action between G1 and G3. So in some sense, um, it, is, it is very natural when we think about this number of tensor, net, the relative number of tensor networks between uh, two, two continuous geometries. In some sense, when, when we think about these geometries as continuous net tensor networks, then basically this, these properties are in some sense natural because you know, say for, uh, one geometry we have 100 tensors and for the other 80 so it's natural that depending how we subtract them we get a negative quantity and but the one i would like to stress that actually this uh, this is this relative complexity uh, defined by Liouville action is not uh, is not um, like complexity based on distance measures in a sense that when we have when we define complexity uh, between quantum state based on distance measures naturally 
this complexity is positive because distance measures are axiomatically positive. Okay, but some of this path integral complexity um, has also attracted a lot of attention. And uh, a Bartek check uh, uh, gave a nice uh, tensor network interpretation of the Liouville action, uh, actually mostly based on the tensor network called MERA or, C or CMERA, uh, by interpreting, if, say, kinetic and potential term of the Liouville action as the number of isometries and unitaries. Also, a group uh, by Hugo Carmarco and collaborators um, gave a nice intuitive argument how we can think about Liouville action uh, as, as an action that counts certain uh, Euclidean and Lorentzian quantum gates. Also, this was motivated to our work with Javier Magan, almost main motivation to our work with Javier Magan to introduce so called Virazoro circuits into dimensional conformal field theories. I'll not have time too much to talk about it today. And also uh, Tadashi in his single author paper from 2018, um, he generalized this idea or he outlined how one could generalize this Liouville action approach to more general slices of ADS geometries and tensor networks. And he showed that uh, one can think about uh, Liouville action in these Lorentzian geometries as naturally related to the so-called wheeler defeat action. I also don't have time too much to talk about it today, but I, ref I, I send you to this interesting work from 2008. Okay, and so before I move, uh, let me just mention the last point about path integral complexity. And maybe so far I have only discussed the two dimensional examples, but actually based on uh, on various properties of this path integral complexity, and then also the properties of this geometries being hyperbolic and so on, we we gave uh, first some kind of phenomenological generalization of this Liouville action to higher dimensions, uh, basically given by this uh, by this formula that I write on this slide first. And then we fixed particular coefficients in such a way that they match, for example, entanglement entropy for spheres, they satisfy co-cycle properties, and they give uh, as solutions of optimization geometries of constant curvature. And then we quickly realized that actually the action that we were, the phenomenological action that we were writing uh, can be actually recast into the simple form of Einstein-Hilbert action with negative cosmological constant here. Um, uh, by simply rewriting it as in, in this metric, uh, the value rescaling of the metric G hat. But actually, this is the action um, of d dimensional gravity uh, and not uh, ADS, uh, say, d plus one dimensional gravity, as you would uh, think from holography. So, um, so this is maybe a, an interesting observation that was uh, that was done already in our work from 2017. And actually, this will become clear in the second part of my talk. Uh, and the, well, the, the emergence of this action from gravity will become clear in the second part of my talk as well. And um, basically, the the nice property of this action, um, which is of course automatically in some sense, uh, which is automatic from from this, is that. Basically, when we vary this action with respect to the vial factor phi in the optimization procedure, of course, by the second equation, we are just doing nothing but uh, computing Einstein's equations and then simply tracing it. So the trace of Einstein's equations actually uh, will be immediately uh, given by a constant in this geometry with negative cosmological constant. But actually, there's a simple, uh, in some sense, numerical observation that if we take the trace of Einstein's equation in d plus one in d dimensions with negative cosmological constant, uh, this is d dimensional negative cosmological constant. Once we trace it, actually the the, the Ricci scalar, um, the trace of the Ricci scalar in, in d dimensions, actually becomes uh, equal to the uh, cosmological constant in d plus one dimensional. Uh, negative cosmological constant in d plus one dimensional ADS. So this is a nice uh, numerical fact that will also uh, be an interesting um, uh, relation in higher dimensional uh, when, when I will now move to the hartle hawking wave functions in ADS. So in some sense, this, this equation generalizes the Liouville equation to uh, from two dimensions to d dimensions and usually you'll see this will be related to so-called Lichnerovich equation in higher dimensions. And also we made a nice connection between this procedure to lower dimensions, namely to 1D, and I will not have much time to talk about it today, but you, as you would probably expect, 
one can derive as an effective action from this optimization given, that is given by the Schwarzschild action. Okay, so are there any questions about this review part? Okay, if not, let me go to the new, uh, to the new story. I'm not sure if things were too clear, too fast or, or, or clear enough, but uh, please stop me if, if there is something that comes to your mind even in the later part of it. Okay, so basically the procedure that I outlined here uh, seems very universal and very general. We just basically take the Euclidean path integral of your CFT that prepares particular states on, on different geometries, so vacuum or thermofield double or um, some conical or some primary states. And then we replace this uh, uh, replace this geometry, the background geometry of the Euclidean path integral with uh, a particular curved background. And then we optimize, we compare the wave function and we optimize this path integral complexity. We minimize it for Euclidean geometries. And we find some geometries that look like slices of ADS. So uh, this has puzzled us and, and also many people for quite some time, what is exactly the relation between path integral optimization and slices of ADS geometries? How can we make it more precise? How can we understand these geometries as slices of ADS? That has been a, somehow a puzzle from the very beginning of all this work. So in particular, um, what we wanted to do in this new works was basically understanding the path integral optimization, but really just in ADS CFT. So let's say, now we focus on, on conformal field theories that have the holographic duals, so really like say large C CFTs in 2D or higher dimensions. And we wanted to understand exactly the gravity dual picture of this CFT procedure of what does it really mean to put a CFT on curved background and how can we understand this optimization of path integral complexity, but really from ADS perspective. And uh, in order to do that, uh, I just need to uh, basically review uh, one simple idea. And um, this of course dates back uh, to the original works by Hartle and Hawking. And uh, Hartle and Hawking wanted to simply do, uh, take this uh, definition of Euclidean path integral that prepares for your states of uh, quantum field theories and, the, and take that definition in the context or apply this definition in the context of gravity and in particular compute the wave function of the universe. And in the same way as we were computing the wave functional in quantum field theory as a function of a boundary condition, in, uh, in GR, you could imagine that basically you, you take some slice of the, of the gravity geometry and you take as a boundary condition, the metric, the induce, say some metric on this slice to be this small HIJ, and then you would perform uh, the, the path integral uh, or basically the path integral over all possible configurations of the geometries in some sense uh, with this prescribed boundary condition with the U, uh, Euclidean action of your gravity theories. In particular, you would take Einstein-Hilbers and, and the Gibbons-Hawking action. And then if you were somehow able to define this uh, or make sense of this, uh, of this integration, that would for, compute for you the wave function of of, uh, of say quantum gravity in this approach. Of course, there has been from the very beginning of this work, there has been a lot of debate how to prepare, how to define this quantity and how to compute it and what can we, can we trust it? And can we really, what, what kind of information can we extract from it? But uh, for my, uh, for the purpose of my talk, uh, uh, basically I'll be mostly focusing on somehow classical properties or, or semi-classical properties of uh, or this definition of wave functional in gravity in the context of, uh, of ADS. So I hope uh, for most of you, this, uh, this definition of gravity wave function or, or wave function of the universe is somehow vaguely familiar. And uh, for the rest of my talk, I'll also need uh, two basic facts, um, or actually maybe one of them should be enough, namely that uh, this, um, classical Hamiltonian constraint, uh, basically um, the, the relation between say the induced metric uh, or the uh, extrinsic curvature of this geometry HIJ 
and the, and the Ricci scalar of the of the geometry on this slice as well as in general cosmological constant that should be zero. This classical Hamiltonian constraint actually um, when we somehow quantize gravity in this canonical approach that becomes um, so this is the Hamilton this is the gravity Hamilton and that becomes the kind of quantum so-called wheeler defeat equation for this uh, for this wave function of the universe. And again, in the semi-classical regime, we'll be mostly interested in this uh, in this relation here. And maybe for people familiar uh, with with TT bar uh, story, this is also an, a relation that uh, that plays a key role. And somehow, it will also be important in in our story on the graph. Okay, so this is as much as I will need from the properties of from the definition of Hartle-Hawking wave functions. And now, uh, towards with, with this idea of path integral optimization in mind, let me now go immediately to, to our proposal or to I, idea of how to think about path integral optimization from the perspective of ADSCF. Okay, so um, let's for the moment consider a particular uh, computation. And then once we perform this computation, or uh, I'll tell you what, what is the main relation to the uh, path integral optimization. And then I'll show you examples that confirm uh, the claim. Okay, so uh, now let's consider ADS geometry for this, for simplicity, I'm just taking ADS3 here in this picture. And um, in this geometry, let's consider a part of the bulk. Uh, so basically we have a radial direction Z of say ADS in Poincare coordinates. And then we have a Euclidean time tau here, goes again from minus infinity to say zero. And, and in, this, uh, in this geometry, let's consider uh, a region, the shaded region M that is uh, uh, bounded by the usual boundary of ADS, basically at Z equals to epsilon, I call this surface sigma and uh, uh, a surface Q that is defined as, a, as Z as a function of tau only. And this surface of Q, uh, on, on this surface Q, I'm introducing an extra coordinate W that uh, goes from, that is parameterized in such a way that basically uh, goes between minus infinity when the surface stretches and then W equals to zero is the point where the surface Q meets surface sigma. For simplicity, I'm assuming that this surface is homogeneous. So there is no particular X dependence, but in many cases we can study actually the more general example. And in this region of space-time, in, in this region of ADS, we want to compute now this Hartle-Hawking wave function, uh, the gravity wave functional in, in ADS. So basically we want to impose some, for, for most of the talk, I will be interested mostly in the metric on the surface Q say some induced metric HIJ as I was writing here in the Hart and Hawking. And we will be doing basically a integration over all configurations of fields with the gravity action. This will be Einstein Hilbert plus given Hawking term. And in general, we'll introduce also a tension term T and this will become clear in the, in, in the next slide, such a way that uh, basically, uh, and then there's also in the definition of the wave function, we have a delta function where we basically impose that the metric on the surface Q will be given by e to the two phi, again, some vile factor phi times for simplicity, uh, uh, the delta AB. So basically the, the metric will be vile flat on the surface Q. And then in principle, we'll be doing the integral over all possible values of, uh, of the metric with this prescribed boundary conditions. Uh, and uh, the usefulness of this coordinate W is such that this coordinate will put this metric on Q in this vile flat form. So basically this metric will be given by e to the two phi dw square plus sum over xi. In general, we'll be doing this in d plus one dimensions. And this vile factor phi, it will be basically related to this embedding function of the surface Q as basically one over f. So, so these are the, now I want you to consider basically this, uh, uh, family of Hartle-Hawking wave functions labeled by this parameter, by this tension parameter T. And, um, and we will be interested in computing them semi-classically in ADS geometries. So let's see how this works in practice. Of course, you know, um, again, uh, as I said, basically a quantum definition of this wave function is very complicated. We would need to specify a lot of things. 
But let's say that we are only interested in uh, classical or semi-classical evaluation of the, this hard to Hawking wave function by simply taking um, the exponent of the gravity action minus the tension term um, of, uh, of this surface Q, so general here, where basically uh, the, this is the gravity action is simply Einstein Hilbert and Gibbons, uh, Einstein Hilbert with negative cosmological constant. And then we have a Gibbons Hawking term as well as the tension. The tension term is just proportional to the volume. And uh, basically, uh, you can think about it as, uh, uh, as basically some degree of freedom or uh, uh, on the surface Q. If you are familiar with ADS uh, BCFT prescription, you can also think about it as, uh, as some degree related to roughly an entropy of, uh, um, of a surface Q. And then uh, basically the proposal would be that uh, once we compute this uh, uh, hard to Hawking wave function from gravity. It will be a function of this uh, metric phi on surface Q. And now uh, um, we'll maximize now the hard to Hawking wave function. So basically uh, with respect to the choice of phi. So we'll be choosing the wave. So, so basically for arbitrary metric, we'll have a an arbitrary tension, we'll have an arbitrary wave functional, well-defined wave function phi, and then uh, we'll want to choose this metric, uh, this, this vial factor phi in such a way that this, this hard Hawking wave function is maximal for this choice of phi. And as you will see in explicit example, this uh, maximization will be equivalent to imposing the Neumann boundary condition on the surface Q, or in simple cases, actually the trace of the Neumann boundary condition when it will be only varying with respect to phi, which is basically setting the uh, this is a constraint of the extrinsic curvature uh, of the surface Q being proportional to the tension. So this is very much in the spirit of ADS-B CFT, but also in the spirit of classical GR, where we basically will be finding uh, so-called constant mean curvature or CMC slices of ADS geometries in the bond. Okay, so this was a very simple uh, computation. This is I, 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 this was an outline of a very simple computation that I will show you an example in the moment. But basically, now our proposal is as follows: We claim that this maximal matrix, that the matrix or these value factors that uh, maximize hard to Hawking wave functions, so this uh, this maximal matrix on Q, are in some sense the gravity dual. So you should think about them as a matrix that are dual to this matrix from path integral optimizations uh, for a particular state, um, dual to a, to a given uh, to a given geometry. On the other hand, the gravity action in this region on M uh, uh, with a particular Hayward term that actually will be important because we'll have a corner here. I'll I'll describe that in a moment. Sorry. It will actually play the role of our path integral complexity function, also the Liouville action that I showed you in the field theory, but actually with, with a whole set of finite cutoff corrections. So, so basically, um, I, will, I will explain exactly what it means, but basically this, this Einstein Hilbert plus uh, this Einstein Hilbert action here uh, with a particular, uh, with a part, when we evaluate this Einstein Hilbert action, will be able to reproduce the Liouville action plus finite uh, cutoff corrections from the gravity side uh, from, from this particular prescription. But in particular, we'll also see that you know, this, this gravity, uh, this, this kind of full path integral complexity functional from gravity will nicely satisfy this co-cycle properties that uh, the effective action for, for gravity from, of effective action from induced gravity like the Liouville action satisfy naturally. And finally, um, our, in the examples uh, of explicit solution, we'll see that basically the minimal solutions, uh, so the solutions that uh, basically extremize hard Hawking wave functions, there will be also a families of different solutions for particular tension T. The ones that are minimal, they will be the ones indeed that correspond to time slices of ADS geometries, at least for the Euclidean examples. For Lorentzian, we can also see what, what they correspond. Okay, so, so basically this is an outline and let me show you how this works maybe in example. So, so we, we stay on the same. So let's say now we consider this uh, example of vacuum ADS 
which is just some d-dimensional Euclidean, d plus one dimensional Euclidean ADS geometry where we take a Poincare metric. We consider this region M in this geometry between basically the radial coordinate epsilon and, and the surface Q given by Z function F of tau. And basically we can compute the induced metric and relate and find coordinate W. Basically this is a conformal time such that the vial factor, uh, the induced metric on surface Q can be written in vial flat form where the vial factor is automatically related to the inverse of the function F of W. Then we can easily compute uh, the gravity action plus the tension term. And actually uh, you can check that this action, uh, that there's no approximation, it can be exactly evaluated. And it's given by the square root form. Uh, so you can see that actually it's not simply a quadrat like the standard kinetic term, but it's really some, it has the values in some sense, um, higher derivative corrections in the derivative of phi dot. Uh, but one thing that you can notice actually, which is interesting is that if you take the, the so-called UV limit where basically this uh, e to the two phi is basically roughly one over epsilon square as you were seeing, as we were seeing in the UV, then uh, when we expand it for small uh, phi dot, you can, uh, we immediately check that uh, this gravity action in the UV becomes nothing actually, but this uh, effective action here that we were proposing uh, from, from this phenomenology actually, and then this d-dimensional action uh, of, of gravity with negative cosmological constant. So actually, uh, and this is up to the so-called modified Hayward term. So if we naively just take this UV limit, we're gonna also end up with a corner term. And basically by uh, adding this modified Hayward term for say a well-defined variational principle, we precisely reproduce this action and cancel this term. Okay, so um, in particular, then when we expand, when we, when we take the full action and we compute the equations of motion, we can see that this becomes nothing but the condition for the CMC slice. So this uh, trace of extrinsic curvature for the surface Q should be proportional to T. And we can easily find a solution. And the solution goes as L square over W square, where W is this Euclidean, sorry, is this uh, conformal time on the surface Q. And it's given, it's a family of solution for various values of the tension parameter T that, uh, uh, and actually you can see it on the plot. So all these surfaces here that maximize hartle hawking wave function, they, inter they are like semi-infinite lines that end at this particular z equals to epsilon. And they interpolate for tension parameter being say minus one in three dimensions, all the way up to t equal to zero. Uh, this, these are basically all the solutions that uh, maximize hartle hawking wave functions. And now we can see that when we evaluate the, um, this gravity path integral complexity, namely the Einstein-Gilbert action with the, modified Hayward term, we can see that actually the minimal value of this path integral complex, this gravitational path integral complexity is obtained for t equal to zero. So indeed, um, um, basically um, this, this geometries correspond to slices of ADS geometry, to slices of ADS. And this particular minimal one is the one that we found, which was basically L square over T square uh, in my review part for, for the vacuum. Maybe okay, uh, Pavo, uh, uh, five minutes. Uh, Perfect. Perfect. Uh, yes, uh, without without the question time. With, with the question time, it's like uh, okay, okay good. Yeah. Uh, so uh, basically, you can also check that this time, uh, the Euclidean time tau is related to the coordinate w by tension over t minus one. Okay, so these are the solutions for the vacuum. Um, did I want to say anything here? No. Um, yeah. Um, basically, let me maybe skip this part. I already said most of this. So we can um, we can also study similarly excited states, for example, in ADS three by again considering the G, uh, region M between some the boundary of the Euclidean black hole geometry and some surface Q given by function F of tau. 
And again, we can easily repeat all this semi-classical hard Hawking wave functional. And then once we vary it, once we extremize it with respect to the choice of, of this vial factor on the induced metric on Q, we again end up with the condition for the CMC slice. This is in ADS3. And then we can again find it. So you can see that this, uh, this um, uh, again, we, we end up with a family of solutions that interpolate between the two boundaries in, in this uh, Euclidean geometries. But in particular, for value of t equal to zero, you can recognize that this is nothing but the geometry that we found already from path integral optimization for the thermofield double uh, path integral that prepares for us the Euclidean thermofield double state in a CFT. And again, uh, the value of tension being zero uh, correspond to uh, the one obtained in the CFT. Uh, now I remember what I was supposed to say. So um, yes, I wanted, uh, because basically, um, maybe I have a comment on this here. Uh, yes, yes, I, I have, sorry. I just got a bit confused <laughs> about the, this. So I'll, I'll mention this in a moment. And uh, basically, uh, let me just say that uh, the, uh, in a similar way, actually by this, by this family of metrics, if we uh, just uh, formally continue this uh, RH in the metric to I alpha, we can reproduce the geometries that we found from the path integral of optimization for primaries, uh, for, for these primaries, and they were related to slices of conical singularities in ADS3. And in the paper, we found a lot of examples in higher dimensional black holes, as well as in JT gravity. And we generalize this gravity procedure naturally to Lorentzian ADS and TS geometries. Um, so uh, I also had a comment about the, the Hamiltonian constraint, which is basically nothing but uh, taking the Einstein equation and then dotting it with two normal vectors to the surface Q. So actually, um, basically, the point is that um, the, yeah, the point of this analysis is that I, I argued in the first part of the talk that just the surfaces that we found from the, I'm sorry, path integral optimization are uh, surfaces that have constant Ricci scalar, whereas the surfaces that uh, we found from the maxim maximization of hartle hawking wave functions, they satisfy Neumann boundary conditions. And the relation between those two is exactly given by the uh, Hamiltonian constraint in gravity, namely, uh, basically because the, all the gravity solutions that when, in which we are computing Q, they are uh, on-shell solutions of Einstein's equations. So of course they satisfy Einstein's equations, then this Hamiltonian constraint is automatically satisfied. And actually if we impose Neumann boundary condition on Q, then this is the Neumann boundary condition. And in particular, this left-hand side of the Hamiltonian constraint is, is by the virtue of Neumann condition is constant. It's basically related to T squared. Uh, and then uh, uh, that implies that basically the richest, also the richest scalar of the gravity solutions is automatically um, constant, negative, proportional to the, uh, to the cosmological constant in D plus one dimensions. So this is again, the relation with the effective action where the richest scalar is proportional to the cosmological constant in D plus one dimensions. By this numerical uh, lack, let's say, this is exactly why this matches. And basically this relate, so, so in other words, uh, the reason why these two geometries match in, in the various dimensions is simply because the Hamiltonian constraint is satisfied and then our surfaces satisfy Neumann boundary condition as well as they have constant, Ricci, constant negative Ricci scalar for Euclidean geometries. And in particular, when we compare these two Ricci uh, scalars, we get a nice relation between the tension parameter, namely one minus uh, T square over D minus one square, and the mu parameter uh, of the path integral optimization in CFT. So in particular, when we take this uh, geom in, when we take the tension parameter to zero, basically this corresponds to mu equals to one. And this is the original path integral optimization that we studied in the paper with mu equal to one. But now we extend this family of surfaces to non-identical non, non, non mu or non-zero tension. And, not, and naturally we interpreted these geometries as basically non-optimal tensor networks. So, so only after really the optimization, after choosing this value of tension to zero, then we really get the optimal geometry. But all these families between the boundary that is the most unoptimal and t equal to zero, that is the most optimal surface, they are naturally captured by this potential of the Liouville term here. 
Okay, so I don't, I'm not sure I have more time, but we basically uh, generalize this procedure in gravity naturally to ADS and DS geometries. And then we found various, uh, say, CMC slices that can be now both ADS and DS in, uh, in both geometries, so hyperbolic and the Sitter slices. And then uh, basically this gravity also motivated uh, to propose a generalization of this Euclidean path integral optimization to Lorentzian path integral optimization, where it's more natural in the Lorentzian signature to think with the Lorentzian action, it's more natural to think about transition amplitudes now between computed in a certain virus scale geometry uh, that is Lorentzian to the usual virus scale in some background eta. And now this can be written as some Lorentzian action. And interestingly, this Lorentzian action from this Lorentzian path integral optimal geometry optimization in Lorentzian CFTs is actually, you can see that some of these geometries are actually solutions of this, uh, uh, this, this action where actually it is given by the Lorentzian Louisville, but also time-like Louisville when we studied DS geometries. And that was actually interesting from the perspective of say DS CFT. Okay, I think I, I already went over time. So uh, maybe let me just conclude here. In this talk, I was trying to, um, uh, first I reviewed the path integral optimization procedure as a tool to extract geometry from CFT states. And, uh, and as, a, as a byproduct of this, I argued that this path integral complexity is a natural definition and universal definition of CFT complexity for states that are prepared by path integrals for arbitrary central charge. And then in the second part, I talked about new work on understanding this path integral optimization from hard to Hawking wave functions in ADS. And then this path integral geometries are naturally interpreted as the CMC slices of ADS space times. Also recently with, uh, with uh, Yorit Krutov and Onkar Parikar, we had a a similar uh, TT bar like construction of this the same slices by basically introducing some uh, position or Euclidean time dependent TT bar deformations that that basically corresponds to this slice geometry that I showed you in this in this geometry. So I didn't have time to talk about it here, but I sent you to this paper. And, um, and there's also a nice inter interpretation of this uh, constant mean curvature slices as basically some uh, York time slices of, uh, of ADS geometries. So this might be very interesting from the perspective of ADS tensor networks and trying to understand how tensor how we can understand emergence of time in gravity from the perspective of tensor networks. This was my slide here that I didn't have much time to talk about. And, uh, and basically there's still a lot to do. We just scratched the surface, let's say on the gravity side and we still need to understand better Lorentzian geometries that are more non-trivial, that have non-trivial time evolution, maybe cosmological singularities and, uh, and some quench geometries like collapses and so on. And this is something we are thinking about at present and we are working on now. So thank you very much. And uh, that's all I had to say. Okay, great. All right, uh, questions? Something. And can I have uh, two things? Uh, one is, one is like a, some, something I asked that on the right hand side of that equation, <laughs> the the feed value at the boundary kind of doesn't appear on the right hand side of the ratio yeah. of the wave function of four feeds. And does that persist in a higher dimension? Because now you went to higher dimension d dimension at some point. So what to what to optimize? Is that the whole metric? Because now not only uh, wire factor. Yes, yes, yes. If you, okay, you want to, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a great question. So actually, in higher dimensions, you could you could do something similar. Uh, you could again you can split the metric like this. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, where is? That. Yeah, basically you could still define the metric this way. So you have, you have some wild factor, either two phi and g hat. Mm -hmm. 
And, and your question is, is really interesting, uh, especially when you go to say, for example, four dimensions, where again, you have an anomaly. And uh, in that case, actually, if you just compute the ratio, so again, the, uh, the, the CFT wave function, uh, the uh, Lagrangian is invariant, but actually the, the transformation of the measure um, is given by the so-called Q curvature action. So, so basically we have a generalization of this Liouville action or Polyakov action from 2D to four dimensional Q curvature action that is higher derivative. But again, it's basically of, of this type where we have a, basically a pro, basically a propagation in some sense of a vial factor uh, in the background geometry of G hat. Um, but that action uh, naturally uh, has a higher curvature. So, so in some sense, the, so at least in even dimensions, actually this persists for six dimensions as well. This, this, this Q curvature actions are very natural, but they are somehow this action here, uh, this action that we are writing here, this phenomenological one is a truncation to, the, to only the, uh, say the, say uh, small reaches a Ricci curvature or because in this Q curvature, you get something, some terms like R mu nu, R mu nu, and also R square and so on. This, this actions pretty much look like basically uh, holographic, uh, uh, holographic counter terms in higher dimensions. Mm. Uh, so in principle, one should, uh, one should uh, optimize those actions in even dimensions at least. And uh, uh, one thing, uh, at least in uh, the examples that we studied, we checked that, uh, for example, pure ADS and this uh, simple black hole solutions in small mass expansion, they are also solutions of this higher curvature geometry, uh, this higher curvature gravities. But um, we have not found an explicit example yet or like an optimization for a state where we would really need this anomaly action, let's say in 4D, uh, that would, would require us to find a more general solution than. Uh, this uh, this uh, this this kind of effective gravity action in some sense. But is it still the pro proposal is to just uh, um, minimize the y factor? Yeah, yeah. The proposal no. would be still to minimize the y factor. Actually, y I had an extra yeah. slide. So so basically, in the, maybe you're familiar with that. So when we compute it for say free scalar, yeah, this mm -hmm. was an example for yeah, for example for free scalar, basically. Uh, uh, so the way we compute it is like, you know, say we choose some standard boundary condition for a free scalar on a disk. And then uh, the way we have to do is like, uh, basically, uh, the oh, yeah, boundary... yeah, but it, yeah, but in one plus one dimension, yes, of course, because this is that's, you can locally at least, you can go to exactly, the goal exactly. the cage. So that's why I asked in a higher dimension, is it still a proposal? It's just to... Exactly. I think it's it's still, yeah, yeah. So let's say, let's say it's still proposal uh, okay. in, in higher dimensions. Okay. Yeah, otherwise probably property doesn't persist. That uh, uh, even if CFT, there is no reason that any arbitrary change of background metric. I think boundary condition won't factorize, right? Mm. Okay. Anyway, I think that's. Oh, but the second kind of question, if you could do something quick, is that in TT bar you said the Euclidean time dependent uh, some TT bar deformation. How yes. to determine that? Time, time dependence. Ah, good, good. You probably so, do, do minimize, minimize or maximize or something, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or some so, condition uh, too. So basically, one, uh, yeah, one, one thing. Uh, so, so let's say that this geometry that we have here, mm -hmm. uh, basically, you can think about it as a cutoff. Uh, that that you, you can impose the cutoff like like on the surface Q, like in the in the usual say Verlinde. Yes. Uh, Marco yes. Mezet. Yes. And then. Uh, Basically, you can introduce this precisely this York time in such a way that you know you, this metric looks like in the Pfefferman Graham coordinates in certain coordinate, mm -hmm. and then you identify that coordinate in the usual way with the TT bar deformation parameter lambda, ah. and then and then you can see that basically um, you know gravity allows you to do that, and then the metric looks like the standard uh, ADS at finite cutoff in that coordinate. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can compute, you know, Hamiltonian constraint here is automatically satisfied and so on and so forth. But somehow like uh, it's, a, it's an interesting question because uh, uh, from our perspective, uh, basically the, the Hardy-Hawking wave function is the wave function like from the gravity side is, co is computed by gravity action in the region M. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. with Neumann boundary condition on Q, whereas from the TT bar perspective, as you very, know very well, the gravity action is in the complement region. So from Z infinity up to Q, and then uh, the boundary condition on the surface Q is actually the Dirichlet, Dirichlet yes. not Neumann. <laughs> but yeah. actually, the, you know, the Hamiltonian constraint in both cases is satisfied, and then it's just a minus sign in front of the action. So, so somehow the both procedures are complementary, and uh, mm. we're still trying to understand this better because it's somehow interesting. <laughs> Great, interesting. Um, is there anything, anything else? Okay, if not, let's thank uh, Power Game. Thank you very much. Okay, our next speaker.